Hello, everyone. My name is Marie Sokrovich, and I am with uh, the Global Institute for Evolving Women, and my platform is Conscious Business. And today, I am absolutely delighted to have Glenise Harvey, Principal at a &H Steel, with us. And we are going to talk about today um, communication for the evolving workplace. I've known Glenise for a number of years, and I know how she has really transformed the culture at a &H Steel. And I have learned so much from her as a businesswoman myself in just how uh, that transformation can occur. And one of the key things we're going to talk today about that communication has to do with memos and it has to do with conversations that are had in the office and um, the one-on-ones and just the whole idea of that evolutionary pattern of how we change culture through communication in the evolving workplace. So I'm going to let Glenise introduce herself a little bit and then I will ask a few questions and this will be a very casual and organic conversation and we hope that you um, glean some tips and points from it. And if you do have questions and want to connect with us, you can certainly do that through the Facebook link or you could um, track us down and send us an email. I'm sure that we would uh, get back to you um, and um, Maybe we'll get a little fan mail, Glumis. What do you think about that? <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Thank you, Marie. Uh, yes, Glumis Harvey, and I am uh, owner of, or co-owner with my stepbrother of a and Steel Family Business. Um, we're going into our 50th year next year, so pretty exciting stuff. Been around for a while. And I stepped uh, into the family business full-time, three years ago, uh, and my passion here is people and leading culture. So that is basically what my focus has been, is changing and transforming the culture so that we become, not that we weren't before, um, our, our parents were very, very focused on people and, and taking care of their people. So that, that's been rooted deeply in the family business. I just took on uh, coming from a teaching background. So I was a teacher for 28 years. So obviously um, lots of experience with relationship, building relationship and taking care of, of little people. And it's no different than taking care, taking care of our big people. So I think I brought a lot of that background with me and and so the kinds of things that we're implementing here are just strongly rooted in in that for mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. so so tell us that we'll start with the easy things like the memos like you, i know you do a fabulous job of that you sh you've shared some of them with me and you know i've it, over the years shared a few of the things that i've used as memos but i find your memos so inclusive and encouraging and inspiring for your staff. So tell me about your memos. Thank you. Yeah, um, so probably two years ago, I started sending out a, a weekly memo on Mondays and really as a way to live and embed our values. So we had created a purpose statement, which was to, our purpose at a &H Steel is to elevate people. And we also uh identified five values and i was driven to not just have values on the wall and say that we have them i i wanted i want people to live them i want leaders to live our values and to to show everyone else that this is how we do things at a and h so i use the memos as a way of communicating to everyone uh, communicating what our values are at a, a deeper level. And also there's a section, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about purpose or values in the upper part of my, my memo, explain things a little bit deeper, flush things out. And then we have a whole acknowledgement section and people are encouraged to send in acknowledgements, acknowledging each other four times that they've witnessed people living our core values. And those are just so much fun to, to receive and then to put into the memos and to send them out. And um, it, it's really, it's a powerful thing. And we also have a values moment at every meeting. So we have our safety moment, which is big construction obviously we talk about safety a lot 
but right behind that is is discussion about how people are living our values as well so mm -hmm. can you tell me of any examples or stories where that that the impact of your conversations or the impact of things that happen on your memo go outside of the of the organization are there any ripple effects of that kind of acknowledgement and that kind of awareness of of how we're living our values outside of the organization so hmm. people take things home and i guess part of that is in those fearless conversations i know we talked about the one-on-ones and the mm. and the connection that you make with your staff on a regular basis maybe we'll start with that first and i'm, I'm sure that those ripple effects will become very obvious but Tell us about the fearless conversations you have in your one-on-ones, because I think that's also just a brilliant way to deepen the culture and create that emotional safety in our work. Mm -hmm. And that, Marie, is more is where I can speak to the ripple effects, because I, I hear more of that in those conversations than I do based on the from the memos. But yes, I meet with all uh, all the office staff as well as our, our shop foreman once a month for 30 minutes and currently we have uh, 40 employees in the office so I have some weeks where I'm meeting with 15 people you know my Tuesdays and, and Wednesdays are basically conversations I usually ask them you know what's the most wonderful thing that's going on in your work life right now what are some of your challenges obstacles places where you need some support and then how can how can Craig and I, who are the owners, how can we support you? And then I always like to ask them what's the most wonderful thing that's going on in their life. So we talk not just about work, but also outside of work. What is it that they're dealing with? Mm -hmm. And I have had, you know, people share with me some pretty powerful things and examples of how living our values outside of work you know at home in their community they share that with me um, and that is where I get really excited because it, it's it's so powerful and overwhelming to know that people are taking things like integrity and responsibility and authenticity and they're up for something bigger than themselves taking that out into the world mm -hmm. and and living it with their families and their communities. So, you know, one on the court example of, of that would be, um, you know, well, this is more inside. So this, this example I think is really powerful of authentic listening. It was our, one of our site superintendents got a phone call from a foreman and said, I've got a gentleman out here who's clearly dealing with something and I don't have time to sit and talk to him and find out what's going on. So Dan went out and he met with the, the young man and, and had a conversation, you know, like what's going on. And it was, it was more personal that was affecting his work. And Dan just listened. And we had, we had done some work in a session with, uh, with a consultant on authentic listening, like really getting over there, and, and finding out what the person is dealing with. Mm -hmm. And um, by the end of the conversation, Dan said that the young man had calmed down, said, okay, I can, I can, you know, I can go back to work. I'll be fine for the rest of the day. And then he called him up, called Dan up the next day and said, I really appreciated you listening to me. And I went home and I, I, thought about what you had said to me and it really made a difference in my life. Wow. Yeah. Like, and, and when I hear stories like that, I know that the work, what we're doing and how hard we're working at this whole, you know, living our values, just making such a difference for everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Glenice, I know you've invested a lot of, uh, of resources and time and energy into growing your people. And I know that that's true for yourself as well. It might be really uh, a value to just let, let our listeners, our viewers know the kind of journey you've been on in, and as far as the kinds of personal growth work that you've done and your diligence to stay at it. And I mean, 
I just think it's remarkable. And the the circle of that is that you have now included your your team. So yeah. share with us a little bit of that journey. Absolutely. Um, so it, this journey started almost four years ago uh, when I met Vic Mirage, who is one of the founders of Unstoppable Conversations. Me, I uh, was looking for someone to come in and, and help us navigate a certain situation here um, at the time. And Vic turned out to be the person that would help us do that. And he recommended to me uh, taking a program called uh, the Landmark Forum. So that's kind of where it all started. And so I did the program. Uh, I continued on with a, a lot of Landmark's um, other development courses. I've taken communication courses, their introduction leadership program. And I really went after myself. And one of those, uh, one of the things that really inspired me was, was reading Richard Barrett's book, The Conscious, uh, oh gosh, I, I won't remember the title, The, the Purpose Driven Organization. And in there, he really points at the importance of leaders to lead themselves, to, to this is where it all starts. And so taking yourself on and really working at who you are being for other people as a leader is, I think it's just the most important thing that we can do. And then when you think of it, in terms of everyone as a leader, no matter what you do in life, you don't have to be in a position of leadership or authority. It's every, everywhere you show up in your life, you're leading. And as Simon Sinek says, you're leading to the left of you and to the right of you. And I think that developing the people in my organization to think that way and to take themselves on and the ability to lead themselves and how they show up for others is like crucial. So since um, I think it was, it's been within the last two years, we have sent six of our leaders to a course called Being a Leader. And that's where they get trained and developed in the core competencies that, that uh, are, are the pillars to our values. And having our leaders really develop themselves and and look at who they are and who they are being for others and and having authentic conversations themselves and and training and developing themselves in, in integrity and responsibility it is it's made massive like transformation it's been transformational and now we have uh, all of our leaders plus people that they've identified as potential up and coming leaders on their teams. We have, I think there's about 16 people that meet every two weeks to have uh, two hours of training in, in the being a leader type of, of technology. So, yeah. Wow. <coughs> Powerful. So education, education. So the learning and then the application of that really is the transformational piece. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's working the muscles, right? It's one thing to, to go and, and get the, the tools or the, the skills, but if you don't practice them and really go after working those, those muscles, then it, it just isn't as effective. And I know this from other professional training that I've had, you can, or books that you read and you, you gather information and all, but it's when you, you, you take it into practice that it gets embedded in your organization. And what a gift you are and certainly, and Craig to create an environment where that is, that has mm -hmm. the norm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's yeah. so so practical. It's so practical. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you another question. Because Richard Barrett is a favorite author of ours, both of ours. I know his leadership books and the, and the transformational work he's done in business. Um, so in his research, he's identified that one of the bigger challenges for women, so we're probably talking to a lot of women out there, is 
our ability to ask for what we want, whether mm -hmm. it's in a business world and our in sort of in relationships or in that just being able to to dream that big dream and verbalizing it. What what do you think of that? Uh, what are your thoughts around around that? So as a successful businesswoman and a real person, <laughs> we all are. And, and that's a huge one for women, like to, to use our voices, whether it's asking for what we want or um, saying something that isn't popular or, or voicing your, your ideas about things. It is, there, there is something there for us to overcome mm -hmm. and I know for myself it's thinking about what are what are what is everyone going to think am I you know it's it's kind of we go back to that I don't want to look bad right I want to I want to avoid looking bad I want to look good but there's something here that needs to be said mm -hmm. and having that courage to say it or to ask for it is huge. Mm -hmm. And it, it also, it all comes back again to who am I being mm -hmm. when I'm, when I'm voicing what I need to voice. Is it coming from a place of um, authenticity? And this is, you know, how I perceive things. Or is it coming from a place of pointing fingers and blaming and making someone else bad or wrong? Mm -hmm. And whether you're a man or a woman, it's, it should be coming from a place of authenticity. And just saying this is, you know, this, if it's something that you need, that you personally need, and you're afraid to ask, I think just coming from that place of, you know, maybe this isn't how the rest of the world sees things. This is how I view it. And so this is what, this is what I perceive as, as a need in this situation or how I see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. That's powerful. So the investment that you make, I've always said this, the investment that we make in ourselves is the greatest investment we can ever mm. make. It is the place. So with that... Uh, the encouragement that we could give to our viewers and our listeners in regards to investing in themselves. Mm -hmm. Self-development, personal development. Uh, and, and I also find that self-reflection, self-assessment, self-reflection, self-awareness mm -hmm. is also an important skill for us to develop and I know for myself personally that usually comes in the form of journaling and reflecting on you know currently where we are um, piloting a competency values competency model and looking at ourselves so those of us who have done being a leader looking at ourselves on a scale of zero to five with respect to our values and reflecting on the day and, and saying, okay, where, where did I show up as having integrity? Where did I show up in terms of having authentic conversations? Where didn't I, and how do I? And so I sit at the end of the day and I, I write down the, the, my thoughts and where I, where I did show up or I didn't show up and then what, what I need to do. But it, it's, it's, uh, it can be any kind of self-reflection, but really looking at yourself and from a place of not, and, and sometimes I think as women we have to be, and possibly, but I'm speaking for myself because I am a woman, is being very cautious not to do that from a place of um, self-deprecation or you know be, beating, beating oneself up, not that kind of self-reflection, right? Mm -hmm really good at doing that yeah. but just looking at who who we are yeah and what makes us happy and what what makes us joyful what makes us not feel joy and and yeah I 
I really believe that's important. Well, let's talk just for uh, like another minute. We've got about another minute and a half left in, the, okay. in regards to our circle of support. So we are both involved with the Global Institute for Evolving Women. It's been a big part of the transformational work and the application of that and our incredible um, circle of support from, from women around the globe. Tell us, tell a little bit about the importance of, of that friendship and that, that support that comes from the circle of knowing. So the evolving woman, how does the evolving woman truly support one another? Oh, that's such a beautiful question. There is nothing like having someone on the other side of your phone, um, someone that you can just call up or text or meet for coffee and, and share what is truly going on for you. And knowing that on the other side, there's someone that is not judging you. They're just simply there to listen and to support. And I think it's really important that we remember it's okay to ask. Mm -hmm. It's okay to ask for that support. Too often, I, I believe we tend to be a bit independent. And I, for one, love to be support to others. I, on the other hand, find it very challenging to reach out and ask for support. Mm -hmm. But keeping in mind that that's a gift that we all love to give away. We shouldn't deprive others of being able to gift us. That's beautiful. So GIFU, the Global Institute for Evolving Women, is having a one-month opportunity to bring in um, people who've either been interested or looking at what is the evolutionary woman. It's, it's a month, a three-month program, which is going to start around the middle of October. And I'm so excited for that because we have an opportunity to really reach that net wider for women whether they're in business or in arts or in politics or wherever they are in whatever walk of life um, to to get connected and to have conversations like this that are deep and authentic and move us forward as evolutionary women so just know that you're you're part of that i'm a part of that and anyone who's watching and listening is a part of that too so with that do you have one last little comment for, for anyone, or shall we just uh, bid our dear uh, viewers adieu? Oh, I think the only thing that I would have to say is, is in your words, stay brave. Stay brave. Stay brave. Well, thank you, Grace. You stay brave, and I promise I'll stay brave too. And I look forward to chatting with you again real soon. Thanks, everyone, for, for watching and listening. And if you have any questions or want to check out uh, the Global Institute for Evolving Women, we uh, encourage you to reach out and find us on Facebook or wherever you have contact. So thank you and have an amazing day. Bye.